Tell me what the Virtuoso Award means to you. Well, it's such a wonderful word, isn't it? It's just, um, you know, especially as I come from a musical family, Virtuoso is a very important word. Um, it always suggests, you know, it always conveys people with independence of spirit and the ability to, I don't know, deliver on a night. It feels to me about, you know, it's, it's the ultimate thing, the essence of performance, really, being a virtuoso. And uh, it sort of shows a flourish. And, and you know, to be, to be labelled that, I, I, I take that very proudly, really. Well, Gone Girl has received such amazing acclaim. How does that make you feel? The, to be honest, the big thrill of Gone Girl has been the amount of people who've gone to see it. Um, you know, to be part of a film where so many adults turned out in order to be part of the conversation and went into the theatre, that, that was probably the most exciting moment of my career because ultimately we're entertainers, we want to do something that entertains people, that gets people talking, that's provocative, that's truthful, that's real, that's human, and, and we seem to have cracked it with Gone Girl and, and it was just... I mean, it was amazing. There's so many colors to your performance as Amy. How did you find her? Did you Over time, you know, you, we, the wonderful thing about working with David Fincher is you get time to explore. We had six months in total, and, you know, I couldn't honestly say I'd found her right at the beginning of the shoot. I don't think you ever can. You grow with these people, you, you develop with them. And I think, you know, luckily, Ben and I had some of the scenes towards the end of the film when she's back in the house and that we, we did shoot those towards the end of the shoot and actually ended up being able to rewrite some of them um, sometimes on the morning of because we knew those characters so well that we knew that different things were needed um, for instance the scene where she gives them the positive pregnancy test that was a scene that was completely tweaked um, just at the final hour obviously with, with Gillian Flynn the writer but you know, that's, that's the luxury you have when you play someone over a long period of time um, and yeah, it was, she was a great character to work on because you get, you know, you, there are so many angles you can dive in from. Finally, is it a coincidence that after playing this murderess, as you call her, that you then became pregnant and brought a life into this world? No, I think I finished playing Amy and thought I have to create a human being after, <laughs> after that person. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it really did. I thought, I don't know where to go here professionally, but also, you know, you, you, you bring a lot of unpleasantness into the world, being Amy. I mean, she's not a relaxing person to play. Um, there's nothing authentic about her, really, until, well, I suppose there, there, there is when she's really being vitriolic and true, but in, in her dealings with other people, she's never really relentlessly herself, like Nick's twin sister Margot is. Um, so, yeah, I think I needed to sort of be relentlessly, authentically myself for a while and, and yeah, bring, a, bring a, an innocent human being into the world. And then one day you can, <laughs> you can at bedtime with your child, when you can sit down and read the book and say, this was the book that inspired you. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I think we should leave it there. Or not, or not. Rosamund Pike. I wasn't expecting to have to speak either. Um, but the, actually, the last time I was in this theatre, I was, I was in the audience, and it was a screening of Pride and Prejudice at the festival, and I was too nervous to come up on stage. Um, so I've come, I've made some progress since then. Um, uh, that's the truth. And actually, the other interesting thing about that performance or that screening was that the film on 35 mil caught fire. <laughs> which was something I'd never seen, except in Cinema Paradiso, and it was good to know that it can happen. And it was quite shocking and wonderful and felt very real. And, um, and I suppose that, that, that's what a virtuosic performance is, maybe, something very real. And, and I suppose it's a combination. I grew up in a musical family, and I suppose the virtuoso is someone who's, who's skilled and free. I think it's something about that, some, some sort of balancing on the knife edge of that. And, um, 
I suppose I'm, I'm always trying to become more skilled because it does take some skill and you know you usually feel lacking in it and freedom is, is uh, I don't think you can do any performance unless you feel free um, and I'm always trying to get to the place where you know you're not self-conscious and you are free <laughs> you know you can see from now that I've got some way to go but maybe this will <laughs> this will get me there thank you